asking about. We're talking to Michael Lyons at Alton, Gold Cup, Alton Park Gold Cup meeting. Michael, out on the Formula 5000 today, but it's already been a busy year for you in the historic world. Yeah, one way or another. I've not got many weekends in my flat these days, but I'm sure it's still there and it's quite nice. But yeah, a very good year. I mean, I've been to some awesome circuits, started the year off in Bathurst, raced at Le Mans in the Group C support race. It's been quite a year so far. I was going to say, so it's historic Group C, historic Formula 1 here in the Formula 5000. Any particular favourites? It's it's so difficult. I mean, you've got the brute force of a 5-litre Chevy in a 5,000 one minute. You've got a precision race car, fully cutting-edge bit of technology in the Group C. You've got all the advantages of a lightweight single-seater in the F1 with all the power of the DFV, but just not quite the same torque as, say, the Chevy. It's it's so hard to call. Everything's its own discipline. I think the chances... When I get to drive in the wet, I'd say probably the F1's probably... would be my machine of choice from anything in the dry everything's got its own charm so i mean laying black lines out of out of the slow corners with a chevy is just awesome but then again going 10 mile an hour quicker through the same corner with an f1 car is another thing so just moving around like that, how much are you actually having to reset your driving technique i uh, you just you sit behind the steering wheel you see what it says on the front of it and you press the pedal and just feel it out but i mean it's it's something I've been very lucky with, to be honest. I started my career in, in historic Formula Ford and very quickly got to jump in, say, I think it was an F2 car at the end of the year. I drove a little Brabham and I drove a couple of other bits and pieces like the Merlin Mark 10 and got a run in a 5000 and all that kind of stuff very early on. So I was very quickly, I mean, I think in my second year of racing, we went to Snetterton one day and I drove the Formula Ford in the Formula Ford race. I drove the... Oh, no, maybe it, was, maybe it was Brands, I can't remember. But I jumped out of the Formula Ford into the Formula 2 Merlin, and that was quite confusing because one had a conventional gearbox and the F2 had a dogleg box, an FT box rather than the Mark 8, Mark 9. And then um, those two are kind of similar speeds but different gearboxes. And then in the afternoon, oh, yeah, just jump in the Lola T400 and you get in there and you go, oh, the world's going past me <laughs> at God knows how much speed. And you just, you just jump in and... Uh, most of the stuff I'm lucky enough to get to drive these days, you drive out of the pit lane and you go, wow, this is fast, and then your head adjusts to the speed and you just you crack on with it, really. Now, obviously, there's quite a little stable of cars in the Lions collection, but what, one intriguing question is in the Group C, why the Gebhardt? Not the obvious choice. I, to us, it was, actually. We, I'll explain a little bit more, but we, um, we love... We love looking at the Group C from sort of watching from the F1s because obviously they're doing similar lap times and they go to all the big events. And it was, it's a bit more of a challenge to run them because there's a lot more stuff on it to break and to fall apart, and you've got to really be on top of them. And also, you need two guys just to put the wheels in the thing and put, take the bodywork off. It's it's a bit more work, but we'd always wanted to have a crack at it. Um, we wanted either a Chevy engine car or a DFV engine car. Um, We'd had a little look at sort of what's about, and w- I think Dad was toying with the idea of spices and stuff. And because it because it was a Group C car, and because of the age of the cars, he always wanted a carbon tubbed car. Because we we had a little flirtation with running a Eurobus car a few years back, and the engines were just a little bit too much for us, to be honest. We could do it, but it was expensive and just too much, really, to do it. To do you could do it if you were just running, say, that Eurobus car, but couldn't run the Eurobus car one weekend and then go and drive the 5000 the next it was just too much so DFV engine car um, carbon tub I mean actually it was the first proper full carbon one piece moulded tub and it's different and it's cool and I mean such an iconic livery it's got so much potential when we found it was for sale we went down and had a look and said yeah okay so here's the car and we were sort of looking through and, yeah that's nice and he goes um, and if you go in those two trailers over there, those two Arctic trailers, it's just full of the rest of it. And we were digging around, and it's it's the complete project. It's got the other tub that they cut the roof off to run as an SR1 car. It's got bits of gearbox here, bell housings there, nose moulds, different configurations with the floors, with the side pods. It's all there, and it is the complete project. And it almost feels like if you, if you wanted to go and buy a buy a cost cap lmp2 engine you could put it in and go and have a crack it was almost what it felt like because it's just everything that was the project was there and that's that was what kind of made it the obvious choice then 
rather than say buying a car that was complete with four wheels and that was it. So. Now, part were quite experienced Group C manufacturers. They won Group C at Le Mans in '86. But uh, possibly, you know, I always get the impression now that's running better relative terms in Group C than it probably did in period, that car. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a funny one. Obviously, nowadays, there's a big variation in the driving standard. There's some guys at the front that are very good. There's some guys that enjoy themselves in the back. And it's just fun because uh, it's not a car that's expected to go out there and win. It's a car that, if we if we can be in the hunt, we're still a little bit over the weight limit with it. We're quite quite heavy still comparably for what we can run because now we're in that late c3 class where you you could be down on 750 kilos if you could find where to throw bits away i mean i'm sure that jaguar for example the the 14 16 14, yeah the 14 I'm, yeah. I'm sure that one's down on the weight limit for example but no it's um it's just a nice thing for us to work away at and what's cool as well is it's a it's a car where it's got data logging on it but it should have data logging on it we're not we don't run anything like that on any of our DFE engine cars or any of the Chevys, anything, anything like that, because it's not period and it's not the way to go racing. But this is a car that I can jump out of and go, look, Dad, you're doing that bit really well, but we could find you a bit of time easily in, in that corner. And just it was a way to also sort of, so I can help try and bring Dad on a little bit more because it's sort of, it's it's one of those things as he's getting older, obviously it's, I'm, I'm getting faster and he's going the other way a little bit so yeah no it's good fun and we I mean what's been fantastic about that first bought the car sort of late last year went through it all through the winter and we were both standing on the podium father and son at Le Mans which I mean <laughs> to be able to do that with my dad immediately before the 24 hours was starting just fantastic you mentioned the Formula One a couple of times, you know, and it's, it's everyone's ambition to, to drive Formula One or even you know, just sit in a Formula One car, I think, for us mere mortals. But, you know, you're smiling as you're telling me about the Group C race. I get the impression you really enjoy what you get to do. Yeah, I enjoy it all. The, the thing with the Formula One is I've been spoiled, really, in terms of the, the FIA Masters stuff and the HFO before it. I've been driving these cars for probably like five years now, I suppose. And I'm just, I'm so at home with them. I've done the mileage. I can jump in them. I know we've run the car for so many years. We've, we know where, where we can get to speed-wise. We still go to circuits, and occasionally I wake up on the right side of bed and I might find two or three tenths. But it's just, the package is there. We're, this is the level we can get it to. This, short of reinventing the wheel and stuff, we're not really going to go much faster. So it's it's great. I mean, what was nice was when we... We, we've had a bit of bad luck on and off this year. We won the important one, being Monaco, but we've been we'd been in the position to win a couple of times, like like some of you guys probably would have seen in Silverstone, for example, with the puncture and having ignition switches break. We've had a, a, a frustrating year with silly things, but it's not anyone's fault. It's not down to bad preparation. It's just these cars are 40 years old, and we've we've learned from because it's been particularly electrical things so far this year. And we've learnt from that, and we've rewired the car before Zandvoort, which will be next weekend, and hopefully touch wood, we've sort of got through it. But no, they're fantastic things to drive, and just being up to speed for me nowadays, it's just a case of sort of getting a decent lap time and looking after the tyres so I've got something to race on, because when you're when you're trying to race a pre-77 car, which has got, say, half the downforce of the cars that I'm racing with, the ground effects cars at the front, we're um, quite similar in a straight line, but we've also got much smaller front tyres, and as a result, they wear a lot easier, so I have to try and do less miles in, say, qualifying. I have to try and do it in two or three laps so I can save my tyres and have a good chance in the race. The time management's an issue in historic F1 as well as current F1. Yeah, well, anything where you're where you're on the limit of the car, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing you've got to manage is the four sticky bits that are keeping you attached to the track, and it's the same in the Formula 5000s as well. It's... They're cross-ply tyres, they move around quite a lot, they've got quite a lot of rubber on them, but you start lying black lines down out of, <laughs> out the corners and those rear tyres quickly disappear. So you've just got to... It's a case of managing them and working them. It means you're getting the most out of them, though, doesn't it? If we're, if we're marginal on tyre wear for, say, a, a qualifying and two races over a weekend, we've got it set up right. If we were trying to do a three-hour endurance race, obviously we'd back the cambers off and we'd be a little bit less aggressive, but it's the fastest way around, and that's what we're here for. Anything within the historic world that you still regard as something you'd really like to do and haven't tried yet? I'd, 
I'm not sure. There's, there's, there's got to be a few things. I mean, I'd love to do, say, the Spa six hours. I've, I've never done that race. I had a crack in an E-Type. Um, someone was ha- happy enough for me to share with them in Barcelona a few years ago. And those little, t- those treaded tyre cars, pretty iffy brakes, um, very good engine. And you've just got to be, it's a completely different driving style. Because I've got a lot of, I've had a lot of experience of slick shod race cars that don't weigh very much that you can just throw at somewhere like Silverstone. You just rock up and you just chuck it at the fast corners faster than you really think you should be able to but then you drive something on treads with a more conventional road car gearbox and it's all a bit steadier and you've it almost feels like it felt like to me the first time I drove an e-type that I should have a pipe and slippers kind of thing like I just I needed something to just calm me down and sort of bring it back and get back to that because it's it's still car control and it's still the same it's just it's a case of adjusting your mind and to the speed of it because you you're constantly playing with it and balancing it but yeah spa six hours is definitely something i'd love to do because a lot of the boys go in for that one it's good and competitive there's an amazing mix of cars and that's that's something i can see on my on my radar one day i'd love to get a race around the north life so maybe do the marathon or something like that but at the end of the day i'm 23 now so I've hopefully got a couple more years <laughs> left in me Michael Brent, thank you very much for your time and please enjoy the Alton Park Gold Cup meeting oh, thanks it's interesting to see whether it rains again tomorrow because we got absolutely soaked in the free in the free practice before qualifying and then it was dry it was dry in the afternoon so yeah it's a bit of a mixed bank holiday weekend as always seemingly but no it should be a good fight there's a couple of fast cars here the um, not Andrew Smith. Richard Evans is out in the in the March seven four two, which is a very good car. And there's that six wheel March, which everyone says every time it rains is going to is going to check out into the distance. I think he won here a couple of years ago in the rain. So now nah, we're going to have a good fight. We're going to put on a show. That's for sure. Brilliant, Michael. Thank you very much.